Welcome everybody, this is 7.2, Properties of Rational Exponents. So our goal with this section is going to be to learn several different properties of exponents and of radicals and then apply them to simplify mathematical expressions. In order to do this, we will need to know some basic fraction operations. So our warm-up today deals with fractions. When adding or subtracting fractions, reminder, you need a common denominator. And to find a common denominator, you want a number that 5 and 3 can both multiply to get. In this situation, 15 would be the lowest one I could use. So if I was going to do this problem, my first goal would be to rewrite this so that both of these are fractions over 15. For the first fraction, you can multiply by 3 over 3 to get a 15 on bottom. So on top, 3 times 1 is 3. For the second fraction, you can multiply the top and bottom by 5 in order to get the bottom to be 15. And then 2 times 5 on top is 10. So my answer for this is 13 fifteenths. Looking at the next one, 4 actually can go into 8. It's a factor of 8. So in this situation, I could actually just make both of these as fractions over 8. I will multiply the second fraction by 2 over 2, and I end up with 1 times 2 is 2 on top. So my final answer for this one is 5 eighths. Go ahead and pause and try number 3 really quick, the 4 fifths plus 1 seventh. All right, here's what you should be doing, and there's more than one correct way to go about this, though we should get a final answer that is the same. I'm ha choosing to have a common denominator of 35, so I have 28 over 35 plus 5 over 35, and my final answer then is 33 over 35. All right, when multiplying fractions, you actually do not need a common denominator. You just multiply straight across. So right now, 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 5 is 10, and then I want to reduce it. In this situation, both of these can be divided by 2, so I end up with 6 fifths. This next one is another add or subtract problem. So let's go through this. I'm choosing to have a common denominator of 6, and on top, 2 times 2 is 4. So 7 sixths subtract 4 sixths is 3 sixths. <laughs> and three that reduces down to 1 half. All right, last but not least, 4 7 times 2 7 again, multiply straight across and reduce if you can. So that is a quick review of how to use fractions. Now, the s first thing I want to start off with after that is the exponent properties that we're going to use. And these do have official names, though our textbook does not use them, and you do not need to know the names. But if you're interested, you could Google online or something if you want to figure out exactly what these are called. All right, so the first one is a to the m times a to the n. So I got the same base, but possibly different exponents. I'm going to give you an example to start off with this. So let's suppose I had x squared times x cubed. Now, think of it like x squared is x times x, two x's multiplied together. x cubed is x times x times x, three x's multiplied together. And now when I think about this, I've got one, two, three, four, five x's total. If you ask yourself what happened here, really I added the exponents. So this property is that if I am multiplying, I actually add the exponents. That's confusing. But if I'm multiplying these two things with a base, I actually am adding the exponents. Here's an example with numbers. Let's say I had 3 to the 1 halves times 3 to the 3 halves. So even though it's a number for the base, I still use the same rules. So 3 is still my base, but I'm going to add the exponents. And here is where our fraction properties come in. In this situation, 1 half plus 3 halves already has a common denominator. So I'm just going to add them together. I end up with 3 to the 4 halves power, which is 3 squared. So my answer is 9. The next property I want to talk about right here is a to the m to the nth power. So let me, let me demo that on the right side here. Let's say I had x squared cubed. Now this time, remember, a power really means how many times I want the base multiplied together. So this means I want x squared three times. Following what we just learned for the other property, though, that adds together to be 6. So a shortcut is, I call this power to a power. If you have power to a power, you actually multiply the exponents. So this one, I will say a to the m times n for my answer. 
with numbers, here's an example. I got 4 to the 3 halves squared. Again, I am multiplying, and here is where our fraction review comes in. If I want to multiply fractions, I need the second one to look like a fraction as well. Hopefully you can remember that 2 as a fraction would just be 2 over 1. Multiply straight across, so I have 6 on top, 2 on bottom, and that is 4 cubed. So my final answer for that one is 64. Alright, look at our next property. Okay, I'll demo that one first again. So, let's suppose that I had 4x squared. Again, an exponent means how many times I want to multiply together the base. So this really means 4x times 4x. But, 4 times 4 is 4 squared, x times x is x squared, or I could have just said 16x squared. But I wanted to show you that what's really happening as a shortcut is that exponent is being distributed to both of those pieces. So this property says that a b to the m power is a to the m times b to the m. And cautionary side note, you can only, only, only use this property if it is multiply or divide in the parentheses. It does not work if you have a plus or minus sign. So let's suppose I had 4 plus x squared. In that situation, you have to write it out and then FOIL it. And we're going to talk about that a lot this year because that's really important. So you cannot distribute an exponent if I have a plus or minus sign inside, only if it's multiplied. All right, here's an example of that with numbers. Let's say I had 9 times 4 to the 1 half power. Again, you can distribute the exponent. And we're going to get to this in a little bit, but a 1 half exponent is actually the same thing as a square root. The square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 4 is 2. So my final answer is 6. All right, this next property, it's best if I just tell you right away what's going on. A negative exponent is actually the same thing as 1 divided by that base with a power, but now it's a positive exponent. And at also, let's say I had a 1 over a to the negative m. That is equal to a to the m over 1. So basically a negative exponent changes something's location. So if it was on top of the fraction, moves to the bottom. If it was on bottom of the fraction, moves to the top. So let's say I had 4x to the negative 2 power. Now notice there's no parentheses here, so the negative 2 exponent is only with the x. But that moves to the bottom of my fraction, and again 4 stays on top because 4, 4 doesn't have an exponent, or really it's a positive exponent. And this is my, uh, my final answer. With numbers, let's say I had this, 25 to the negative 1 half power. That becomes 1 over 25 to the 1 half power. And again, a 1 half exponent is a square root. So the final answer for this one is 1 fifth. This next property is just, I have a to the m on top, a to the n on bottom. And actually, when you have something like this, you subtract your exponents. Let me show you. Let's suppose I had x to the 6th divided by x squared. Now, check this out. x to the 6th is really like x times x times x times x times x times x. Six x's. On bottom, x squared is like x times x. Now, we know from past math, anything divided by itself is equal to 1. So really, this is equal to 1, and this is equal to 1. So I'm just left with these four x's here, and when I have four x's all multiplied together like that, it's x to the fourth. So shortcut, 6 subtract 2 is 4. So x to the fourth is our answer. Now, quick comment down here, and then I'll erase it so you have space for the next example. Let's say instead you have more on bottom. This time, this time, I'm left with x to the fourth on bottom, and when that runs out, I just put a 1 on top to represent the fact that x to the fourth is still on bottom of the fraction, but there's really nothing on top. So I have to have a 1, though. I can't just have it be blank. All right, I'm going to now give you an example of that property with numbers. So let's say I had 6 to the 5 halves power divided by 6 to the 1 half power. Again, subtract your exponents 
I ended up with 6 to the 4 halves power, and that is 6 squared. So my final answer for that one is 36. All right, last but not least for exponent properties, when I have a parentheses with an M outside of it, this is actually related to the one I said earlier. If you are multiplying or dividing inside a parentheses with an exponent outside, that is when you can distribute the exponent. So if I had x over y to the fourth, I can distribute it and I end up with x to the fourth over y to the fourth. In numbers, let's say I had 8 over 27 to the one-third power, distribute my exponent, and then a one-third power is the same thing as a cube root, and so my final answer is 2 over 3. Cube root of 8 is 2, cube root of 27 is 3. Now we're going to do a lot of examples dealing with the properties I just taught you, but really these are practice problems. So I already have given you examples of all of these different properties. Now we're trying to apply them. So at this time, pause this video, go ahead and try the problems, and when you're done, unpause. So this is you unpaused right now. I'm just going to fill in the answers, and then if you need more help with any of these, we will go over them more thoroughly in class. So here are the answers that you should have. For part B, you might also have a decimal of some sort. That would be okay. Flipping over to the back. All right, so how'd you do? Make a star by any you want to ask me tomorrow, and we'll talk about them during class. All right, so now we have very similar rules with some radicals, but now we have properties of radicals that I want us to talk about. So our first property is that if I have two things multiplied together under a radical, it is the same thing as splitting them up separately. So let's suppose that I had the cubed root of 54. 27 times 2 is 54. So I, would, I could split this up into the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2, and the cube root of 27 is 3. So that's why I would, would, would want to do that. Another example, I can also start separate. So let's say I had the square root of 2 times the square root of 4. You can multiply those together, so that would be the square root of 8. All right, next property, if I have a fraction under a square root, the exponent here, or sorry, the radical here, distributes to the two parts. So actually, the top is under that radical, and the bottom is under that radical. So let's say I had the square root of 25 over 9. You could split that into the square root of 25 divided by the square root of 9. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 9 is 3. Same thing, if I had the cube root of 27 or the cube root of 8, I could find those answers, but let's say I wanted to put these together. That would be the same thing as a cube root of 27 over 8. All right, at this time, we are going to just review how to simplify radicals. So I just showed you that if you know a perfect square, for example, right now, that would go into 50, I could split this in the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, and I end up with 5 square roots of 2. But there are often going to be things that you don't know a perfect square of, and there's going to be lots of roots that aren't square roots. I am going to show you a method that you could do use that works for any type of root. So I call it upside down division, and here I go. I am going to take 50. What I want to do is I want to divide by a prime number. So prime numbers are anything that does not have a factor besides itself and 1. So they would be 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on. Usually you don't have to go above that when I'm doing this process. So 50 can be divided by 2 and it's 25. 25 can be divided by 5 and it's 5. And we're done when our answer is a pr uh, prime number. And when I'm done like that, this really means that the square root of 50 is the same thing as the square root of 5 times 5 times 2. And this is just 5, because it's the square root of 25, and then this doesn't really simplify, so it just stays there. Same answer I got over here. 
Alright, I will do more examples in the next video. This is 7.2, day one, part two. All right, so I was just talking about this process called upside down division and how I'm really trying to simplify this radical and I'm trying to pull out a perfect square that I have. Now, the reason I need, a, um, well, here's a shortcut. So if I have a pair of something, I put one in front and I'm looking for a pair because it's a square root, this will be better described if I have a larger number. So let me do the ex next example and I'll say more. Okay, so let's say I had 243. 2 doesn't go on into it, but 3 does, so 3 can divide into 243. The answer is 81. Divide by 3 again, I get 27. Divide by 3 again, I get 9. Divide by 3 again, and I get 3. All right, so I'll show you the long way, and then I'm going to show you a shortcut. So this, again, really means the square root of 243 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. This part right here would be the square root of 9. This part right here would be the square root of 9. So I've got 3 times 3 square roots of 3, so 9 square roots of 3. Here's the shortcut. Because it's a square root, I need a pair of 2 in order to cancel out the root, basically, or uh, two numbers multiplied together in order to be able to find the square root of it. So my shortcut is I'm looking for pairs of 2. Anytime I have a pair of 2, I put 1 in front of the radical, and then my little leftover goes underneath the radical. Things that are together in front are multiplied together, and things that are together underneath are multiplied together. Let's do the next example. So 750 can be divided by 2. The answer is 375. Can be divided by 5. The answer is 75. Can be divided by 5 again. The answer is 15 can be divided by 5 again, and the answer is 3. Now, for this problem, it's actually a cube root. So, in order to find a number that I can pull out, I need something that I can take the cube root of. So, I just want to again show you the long way, and then I'll give you a shortcut. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, and the cube root of 125 is 5. Now, 2 and 3 are left underneath, I multiply them together to get 6. So here's the shortcut. Because it's a cube root, I need a group of 3 in order to put 1 in front. And then I had two different leftovers this time, so both of my leftovers went underneath and they're multiplied together. So 5 cube roots of 6 is my final answer. Let's do part D. Now, for part D, I'm looking for a fourth root. So I'm going to need a group of four in order to put a number in front. I'm still doing upside down division. Now, this one may have, you may have had to test a few prime numbers before figuring out what the factor is, but it can be divided by seven. And you could have started with three as well, but I divide by seven and I get 81. Divide by three, I get 27. Divided by three, I get nine. Divided by three, I get three. So now this time, because it's a fourth root, I need a group of four in order to cancel out the root. So I need a group of four in order to put one in front, and then this time I have a leftover of seven underneath. And again, if you want to see it longhand, what's happening is that I have the fourth root of 81, because three times three times three times three is 81, times the fourth root of seven, and we're just finding the fourth root of 81 there. Go ahead and pause and try E and F. Okay. You have unpaused and you're checking your answer right now. You should end up with, for E with 2 in the fifth root of 15. So I'm just going to quickly go through this and show you how I got that. Again, you can ask questions in class if you're confused on this. And it is a fifth root, so I'm looking for a group of 5 to put 1 in front, and then 3 and 5 are my leftovers that I put underneath multiplied together. For F, the correct answer is the cube root of 100. This one can't be simplified. Here's why. If I try to if I try to find my factorization here, I actually do not end up with any number that has a group of three. And I needed a group of three to si simplify, so this one actually cannot be simplified anymore. And that does happen sometimes. All right, I needed to show you that because we're going to use that often when I'm trying to use those properties of radicals I showed you in the first video. 
So let's look at example three. I'm trying to simplify by using properties of radicals. And these problems have more than one correct method of doing this. So it's okay if you go about it a slightly different way than me as long as we both get the correct same answer. In this situation, I'm going to use the property that I can multiply 4 and 16 together underneath a radical. And so that ends up being the cubed root of 64. And actually, if it is a root you know, take it. So cube root of 64 is actually something I could just use in my calculator, so I'm just going to go for it. Of course, if you wanted to, you could have done your upside down division process. And what's happening here is I'm ending up with, oh, you know what? I just made a mistake. Did you see what mistake I made? Okay, maybe not, but anyways, it's a cube root, so I'm looking for groups of three. And when I started out, I circled groups of two. Oops. All right, so I've got a group of three, which is one in front, another group of three, which is one in front. There's nothing left, and the answer is four. Let's look at part B. So again, use our property of radicals. This time, I'm going to use a property that a fraction like that can be put together. And this helps me because 162 divided by 2 is 81, and the fourth root of 81 is another one we know. If you test it in your calculator, the answer is 3. Go ahead and pause the video and try C and D. If you have unpaused and you're checking your work, you should end up with 5 for C and an answer of 2 for D. All right, that is all for properties of rational exponents, day one. We will do the second page for day two videos.